and the dog is right behind him. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Oh, fantastic. The way you tell him. It's all about timing, isn't it? It really is. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, and good day. Welcome to another edition of the Digital Download, which is... The I got it. Running. The longest <laughs> running <laughs> weekly business, business talk weekly. show on LinkedIn Live. <laughs> we need Today, to do that so that we each have a couple of words each. Starts. Yeah, because that would go so you can get it to <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, we we could do that too, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that that fits right into today's topic. Uh, today we're talking about unlocking the full potential of your business message. Uh, you might sense a theme developing across our last few episodes. I assure you, it was not planned. I should be so smart. Uh, quite serendipitously, uh, three weeks ago, we had Drew Donaldson on the show, and he shared with us how to distribute content for the best organic and paid results. Building on that, last week, Greg Wasserman shared with us the power of spoke Full spectrum podcasting. Say that five times fast. The power of full spectrum podcasting. It's more than just hitting record and publish. And today we have a special guest, Donna Kund, to help us unlock the full potential of your business message through internet radio. We'll talk with Donna about the power of reach, the power and reach of internet radio and we'll explore globalizing your evergreen content. But before we bring Donna on, let's go around and introduce everyone. And while we're doing that, why don't you in the audience reach out to a friend, ping them and have them join us. We strive to make the digital download an interactive experience. Audience participation is highly encouraged. Right, uh, so introductions, Adam. Would you kick us off, please? I'm Adam Gray, co-founder of DLA Ignite, and I'm simultaneously have a divine smiling face and I'm wearing an England rugby shirt, looking at the comments we've already received on today's show. <laughs> um, so so are, you wearing, are you wearing an England rugby I, shirt? I'm not actually. I'm wearing a white polo neck and a, and a black jumper. Uh, I, sh I should have done really, shouldn't I, to support the, the boys? Yeah. Speaking of comments, Andrew Slesser says, good morning, good afternoon, good morning. and waves. Let's wave so he can wave to the monitor. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, thank you, Adam. Alex. Good morning, good afternoon, all. My name's Alex Abbott, uh, founder of Sapiro. I'm not wearing an England rugby shirt, although I am wearing a rather fashionable salmon colored, slightly pink sports shirt. So, so do you call it Adidas or do you call it Adidas or? I, I call it Adidas. Right. But I think the Americans call it Adidas, you know. But what, one thing we can it's be Adidas. certain, Alex, <laughs> is that neither neither in the US or in the UK would we refer to it as fashionable. So you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Ouch. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm I'm Tim Hughes. I'm the um, CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite, uh, and I'm also famous for writing the book Social Selling Techniques to Influence Buyers and Changemakers. Thank you and for and that I'm going to add a, I'm going to add a third piece onto the end of that is I'm a podcaster. <laughs> You're a podcaster. Yes. Yes. Yes, you are. Excellent. Now everyone's Thank picking you. on me, Adam. Well, well. <laughs> 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 and myself, LinkedIn user, who are you? Unfortunately, it comes up as LinkedIn user when it when it does that. It means you haven't put your set your settings in in LinkedIn to say that you are willing to share your data. Just so you know that. Um, but it'd be great if you could just say you who you are. We didn't I, I just name. checked. It's it's Paul Spencer. Paul Spencer. Oh, how do you Next. check? I, I looked at the live stream. I've got it open in another tab so oh. I could see what was going on. <laughs> there we go. And Sorry, myself, Rob. I'm Rob Durant, founder of Flywheel Results. I'm not famous for writing any book yet. Woo! <laughs> All right. Um, as I said, this week on the digital download, 
we're going to speak with the co-founder of the IBGR network, Donna Kuhn. So let's bring her on. Donna, good morning and welcome. Hey, good morning, morning good Donna, afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> Donna, thank you for being here. Uh, please tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you got here. Oh, well, it's been an interesting journey to say the least. Um, I, I, I started out as a military musician and went into uh, retirement, <laughs> uh, not knowing what I was going to do after that and stumbled across a, a, a coaching course, actually, uh, became a business coach for a while. In that process, met up with a guy who was the general manager at a local radio station. We did some shows together, uh, come to find out he was a consultant doing a turnaround. And when they decided to sell the station, Bill and I, William Eastman, my business partner, we looked at each other, shrugged our shoulders and said, hey, let's start Internet Radio because he had already done the research. He wanted to take that terrestrial radio station and put it out globally anyway. He'd done the research and, and we said, yeah, sure, let's do it. So in January of 2020, we launched the International Business Growth Radio Network, IBGR. And um, March... Uh, something big happened in 2020 if you all remember <laughs> there was this this thing called just, the yeah this just, word that, just, uh, just after pink shirts went out of fashion right 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 <laughs> so the world just kind of shut that. down it was supposed to be for two weeks it ended up being a little longer than that and uh in in april of 2020 we actually had the station up and running with with one host, one listener, one country. It was Bill on the air, it was me listening, and it was the US, obviously. Uh, and then, so I reached around the world to some of my colleagues and said, hey, you're not doing anything, you wanna get on the radio? <laughs> they said, yeah. And, uh, and in, in a very short time, we were able to reach 183 countries, get them wow. listening in. Yeah, I've put, um, about 70 hosts from around the world on the air. I've got uh, 14,000 podcasts I help produce, and wow. we have, uh, yeah, we've, we've, I've got uh, like over 675,000 downloads collectively. So it's been this amazing thing. And I woke up one day and said, oh, look, there's patterns. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what I do now is I, I'm, I'm really focused on amplifying messages to help business owners tell their story through wow. radio before before we get into that donna because i've got a ton of questions for you oh good <laughs> can you i've never heard the term military musician i'm, I'm assuming you played an instrument in the military i did i played i played the piccolo and i this pivot magazine just came out and and i was very honored to be a part of it but i, I bring this up because i just happened to have a picture if you can see oh yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was me in a former life <laughs> in Seoul, Korea. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep, so, lots of stars and stripes forever. If you've ever heard that march, I won't sing. Donna, I know you and I had talked, mm -hmm. um, and, and you helped me understand it a little better. But for the audience at, at large, what exactly is internet radio? It's a great question that we hear all the time. Uh, so a little education piece here is there's, there's basically three types of radio. There's terrestrial radio, which is the old AM, FM that you get on the dial and you listen in. And then there's satellite radio, which will come in literally from the satellite. And then there's internet radio where any listener from a smartphone to a computer can listen into the programming. And we chose internet radio because our goal and our mission is to reach the four corners of the world with coaching and consulting that many of these business owners wouldn't have access to. It's very high quality and it's free for them to listen to. And so you, you can go to a website and listen, or, you know, we have our radio station listed on TuneIn radio, on Sirius radio. So when you get into your car, you can turn it on. It's the new FM, right? <laughs> uh, and yeah, so it's, it's slightly different than just a podcast because it does run continuously 24 hours a day. You don't get to choose who you listen to, but you can choose what time you listen to if you want to follow a particular show or a particular host. And it, it is that opportunity to 
um, really get an org organic reach out into the world. Because tuning so is on smart speakers on Alexa, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you can, you can, you can say, you know, Alexa, listen to IBGR network, and there we are. <laughs> so it's linear programming, and it is um, internet based, but I can hear it in my car. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You can. Wow. You can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can hear it in your car. You can hear it on your smartphone. You can. You can take it wherever you want to take it. And it's this idea that, you know, different than video. If if you're a business owner and you want to learn something to grow your business, you you can go to video, but you got to stop and watch most of the time. It's 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 so hard to put a video on and not want to keep your eyes on it. But with radio, you're just listening. So like, I, there's no such thing as multitasking, but yes, you can be listening in the background while you're doing your work and growing your business. And and we've kind of set it up a little bit different, Rob. We have a course-based programming. So in a 13 week period, which is a business quarter for most of us, I'm gonna take a host and put them on the air for an hour and they're gonna create four episodes in that hour. And they'll have 52 episodes at the end of the season and the listener can get little breadcrumbs along the way to take their business from point A to point B. Alex, you had a question and then I have lots of follow up. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I can't remember what my question was now, Rob. Oh, sorry uh, about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to get my head around it really. So just talk us through the... <laughs> <laughs> Talk us through, because I hadn't really thought about, you know, the diff, you know, podcasts to me today are, are also visual, uh, uh, visual. Mm -hmm. so, they can be. Uh, you know, is there is there such thing as a do we do we call it video podcast or do we just still refer to it as podcast and it's and it's both? What's your do you have a view on that? Yeah, there can be. And, and and so the the majority of our hosts run through this 52 episode, especially when they're just getting on the air. I call it the training wheels version of podcasting. I'm going to put you into a formula, a methodology. It's going to be very structured. You're going to get comfortable behind the microphone and you're going to have a 52 episode playlist at the end, which is pretty, pretty substantial, especially in 13 weeks. Um, and then we have a thing called the TV talk show formula where it is intentionally into the video like you're doing here it's conversational it's bringing people on interview style but i always tell my hosts you know we talk about the leveraging this is unlocking the full potential of your business message i always tell my hosts whatever format you're going into if you're getting behind the microphone push the video button too kind of you know look look a little presentable in the morning or whatever time you're doing it and push the video button too because then you can put it YouTube has podcasts now. Spotify has podcasts now that are video. And, you know, you're already, you're doing the work once, you might as well leverage it. And then it could be a course, you could be that talking head in, in different places. So, yeah, I don't know. Did I answer your question? Yeah, well, I, uh, not really, but. Okay. <laughs> so, so the question is, is podcasting video? Well, I, so. I've started calling, I started thinking about a podcast just mm -hmm. being, a, a vid, you know, years ago, a podcast was just audio, but it feels like today it's video and audio, but we're still calling it a podcast. And is it, is it the format that we're naming or is it, I know Rob, you have a view on this. We've talked about, you know, thinking about podcasts as audio first. I think I think you believe that because we'll, we'll reach a bigger audience. We're mm -hmm. not limiting the audience that we reach. Right. Yeah. I, I believe if you think audio first and you have video, well, then wherever you display the video, the audio works. Whereas if you think audio first and you're displaying it, uh, playing in an audio only format, it still works. So you're not um shutting out i don't i, I want to say half the audience i don't know uh how many would watch and how many would listen but if you build for listen first you're not alienating those that watch 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a background both as a therapist and as a teacher. And we learn that there's three general types of learners, the audio learner, the visual learner, and the kinesthetic learner that likes to be fully immersed. So if you're only putting out audio, the, the, the listening learner is percentage wise, one of the smaller ones. So you're missing out on reaching people. And of course, I'm always focused on education in, in my podcasting structure of some kind. But, uh, but like you say, Rob, it, if you're, if you're going to do it one time, why would you not do it big? And then you can chunk it out into the smaller things like Greg last week on cast magic. What I love about cast magic, what I love about Greg and, and, and all that they do over there is you take one little piece of something, whether it's a video or an audio and you now have all of this stuff that you can put the out full there. Spectrum. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because one of the things that um, um, Twitter or X as it, as it is now and, <laughs> and LinkedIn have, have, trying to, have tried to do is basically um, uh, support social audio. So you've got this thing here on, link, on LinkedIn where we're, we're transmitting over LinkedIn and, and other social media channels as well. But they also run a, a social audio um, product as well, don't they? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, a couple of comments uh, from the audience. Uh, Andrew Susser says, podcasts with video still works as an audio show. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sure. And Rob Turrell uh, shares, there are AI tools that now convert English spoken videos into different spoken languages and subtitles, even if speakers have no language knowledge provides automated dubbing some struggle with surnames well rob i struggle with surnames as well so i don't think that's an ai thing i think uh, they'll probably advance more than i will uh, donna i want to bring it back to the the full potential of the business message how can you captivate your audience and avoid common pitfalls in broadcast i just uh, interesting you should say that i just had a conversation with my 27 year old daughter who loves to listen to podcasts and what she said to me was we, we were she was a captive audience because uh she flew into richmond where i'm from when we drove up to philadelphia because she's temp attending temple university flew in from chicago and she said mom i've tried to listen to some of your podcasts but they're so short ours are 13 minutes long and I just want to continually listen. And I said, okay, great. I don't really care. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I care about you, but I, it, it's structured like a course. I want you to, as a business owner, listen for 13 minutes and go do something to build your business. And then come and listen for 13 minutes and go do something to build your business. And she says, oh, it's like a course. I'm enrolled in a course right now that's just like that. I said, yes, it's like a course. So to, to your point, Rob, initially, you're a business owner who wants to have the end game that the host is promising in 13 weeks. And so as long as the host upholds their promise to, to take you logically through this, you're going to keep showing up for the next step, little breadcrumbs. It's so interesting that you put it that way because I'm teaching a marketing course at Northeastern University. And one of mm -hmm. the first things that we talk about is the value promise. What promise are you making to your prospects and customers? And here it sounds very similar. What promise are you making to your audience and are you delivering on that? Yeah, 100%. So how can you? Oh, go ahead. No, I, I was going to say, I, I, I have an observation, and I'm saying this not to be controversial or awkward, because simply I don't know, because I don't, Tim's face when I said that, <laughs> um, because I simply don't know. So I would have thought that um, there is a big bonus to having video content short. And the reason for that is that where am I going to view video content? I was going to be on my phone and I'm going to get interrupted by everything from TikTok to LinkedIn. Um, it's going to be on my computer. So I might be watching it while I'm having lunch or it might pop up on my stream during the day. And I think, oh, okay, I'll, I'll take a little bit of time to, to watch this. Um, 
But when I'm, where would I listen to a podcast? So because I, I, I like to watch stuff as well, if I'm listening to a purely audio podcast, I would imagine I would listen to that when I'm in the car. Mm -hmm. When I'm in the car, the last thing I want is a 15 minute segment because I'm going to be in the car for two hours. And in this country, if you pick up your phone when you're in the car, you get six points and a 300 pound fine. Um, so what I would be looking for would be extended content, like an audio book. <laughs> like a radio program. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's the beauty yeah. of the radio because it, it will continuously play for you. Yeah, and, and and I guess that's uh, that's the thing. So I see the I, I, I see the rationale for having this constant stream of stuff. Um, so so why so why the thirteen minute breadcrumbs? Why not just get because you know if if we get you on this show, we want you talking for an hour. Don't want you talking for fifteen minutes. Mm. Yeah, I, I I've gotten that question before, and it's it's a great question, Adam. Uh, why 13 minutes? Well, there's there's been studies in the podcast world of what is the ideal length and 12 to 15 minutes has been some thoughts behind podcast uh, frequency that listeners want. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm a radio station and I need commercials. So in an hour's time, I run two minutes of commercials at the top of the hour, two minutes of commercials at the 15, two minutes of commercials at the 30 two minutes of commercials at the end. So, or at the 45. And if you do the math, that's 13 minutes in between. So it fits out very nicely for that and small chunks to grow the business, right? Um, if for those listeners who want continuous listening, more of a variety programming, just do, tune into IBGR.network radio. Yeah. And for, for those business owners who have, caught on to something that they want more of maybe maybe you jump in at episode 25 and you're like oh well i've missed the first 24 episodes well then you go find their podcast and you could take it during your business time of growth every business owner i think should have some growth time in their schedule and that's when those are listened to that way does does that answer your question perfectly uh, my um my partner 28 year old um who has been living with us on and off for the last couple of months. Um, he listens, so so he's he does a lot of cycling and he does a lot of cycling maintenance. Um, and um, he basically will go out into the garden. He's got one of these things where he puts his bike on and that, and he just puts a podcast on. Mm -hmm. And it's just, and it's, it, it, it's what I would have done previously when I would have turned the radio on. Because mm -hmm. what you're looking for is mm -hmm. something as you say, that's something continuous that you're not having to tune in. But of course, he's got a smart speaker and he just chucks it down on the uh, on the table outside and starts fixing his bike and it and it just goes on in the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and so with the content, 52 episodes at the end of 13 weeks, anybody knows that there's 52 weeks in a year, I think um, that's a year's worth of content to repurpose. And when you run it through AI, like Cast Magic, you're able to repurpose it and leverage it into so many different ways. Uh, ways that our hosts use it, uh, Sarita Johan had her podcast playlist on her website. She's a coach, business coach. And she hired her, her like most ideal client. She called me all excited. She says, Donna, you'll never guess what just happened. The guy was cutting his grass, listening to her podcast. And because he heard her voice, he heard her message and he heard her transformation. He said, I have to hire you. And he did. And, and a lot of our podcasters will put their best 13 minutes as a hyperlink in their email signature, or they'll book a, a, a client will call them and say, I, I want to have book a call with you. And they'll follow up and say, great, listen to this 13 minutes ahead of our call. And that'll be our starting point. So there's so many different ways to use that little 13 minutes versus if I say, listen to this hour long, or if I, you know, and um, maybe scroll forward to this number, whatever, but it's just very, very nice and short and concise that if you, you know, I, I tell people, if you can't take 13 minutes to grow your business, I'm not sure I can help you. <laughs> I, I, I interviewed on my podcast, a, a guy called Michael Brenner, who's one of the most, um fascinating and knowledgeable marketeers out there um and i decided to let it uh, i decided to let it go on because he was giving out so much information and we ended up talking for 50 minutes and nobody listens to him 
Mm -hmm. Even though it's one of the, you know, if you want to understand how modern marketing today and how to run your business, it's the best thing to listen to, but nobody listens to it because it's 50 minutes. Yeah, and you know, so back to the C word, COVID. Before COVID, they would say you have to have seven touch points in a sales process. And now they're saying 15, 20 touch points in a sales process and our attention span they there are studies that says our attention span went from here to shoop, down to here because there was so much information overload during those last i don't know three four years however long it's been and and so again that 13 minute sweet spot of of the rationale can can you spend 13 minutes to grow your business i'm at the end of it i'm going to give you an actionable and you're going to go do it and it's going to solve a problem can you commit 13 minutes to that? So, you know, I see the heads nodding. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and, and Donna, and again, it's about making sure that as an individual, what you're doing is that you're booking um, growing time within within your schedule or schedule, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, and um, um, and making sure that you, you recognize that you need to be growing yourself because right. Ultimately, we all want to be our best selves. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the programming that we have on the station, it's it's based on a balanced scorecard. So Monday is all about finance topics. Tuesday is all about operations. Wednesday is customer sales, marketing. Thursday is HR and people leadership. And then Friday is that executive thinking day, that big picture thinking day. Um, our weekend programming is a lot of mindset and, and personal growth for the, the complete entrepreneur experience. A lot of us don't want to grow our business on the weekend, but we can grow ourselves, you know. <laughs> um, but it's it, it's one of those things, uh, back to the conversation with my daughter, she was trying to to inform me and I, and I told her I really valued the conversation because she wanted me to be a podcast company the way that the 27 year olds understand podcast. And I said, no, this is blue ocean, baby. This, I'm, I, I, I hear you and I love you, but this is a different concept because of all the ways that it's leveraged. You know, when you follow influencers or my business podcasting made easy, you're 80% done with a book in 13 weeks. How do I know that? Because I had Ben Joya, who is a, a four-time best-selling author, book coach. I, I co-hosted a season with him. And when we finished, he was like, you know, hey, Donna, look, you have all you have your audio transcription already done of your book. You have your 13 broad topic outline of your book. And and we followed the model. We're our own case study. We did 13 weeks of a podcast. We did a three day event and our book is coming out. I'm in the final edit of of the book. We did that in eight months, a global radio show, a 52 episode podcast, a three day event and a book in eight months what could that do for your business and your positioning and your your authority yeah. so and it's not just a, a 13 <laughs> minute broadcast it's mm -hmm. 13 minutes of <clears throat> excuse me evergreen content right mm -hmm. yep explain to those that might not be familiar why it's important to have evergreen content as part of your business message. Yeah, that's great. Uh, if you've been in business for a little while, you should have found what we call your voice, your secret sauce, your special who you are, your methodology. And that's what we want to capture in these 13 weeks is basically your legacy. And so you can continue to say the same thing over and over again, which you should once you've found that. Uh, but it, when you run it through a structure like this, you know, I've, I've sat with business owners and roadmap the 13 weeks out with them. And they said, I have so much more clarity on who I am and what I do because I've put this into this, this roadmap. Um, but, but yes, it's evergreen because then you leverage it. You can put it into, we use headliner to get audiograms, the little short clips, your talking head becomes a, a playlist on YouTube. You, you can get on, on all the audio places. You can have a newsletter. You can have a book. You can have a course. All of the different ways to 
take this one radio show and make it into all these other things. And the beauty of the radio show is I'm going to say, Rob, at two o'clock every Thursday, you're going to have an hour show. You got to show up and do something. So you have accountability because you've already told your people that you have a radio show. You have accountability to actually create the stuff. That's a big hurdle for a lot of podcasters is getting building that that uh, that muscle of creation consistently. And 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 then you're you're speaking it uh, out into the world and then you're repurposing it and leveraging it. That answer your question. Yeah. So so so. The initial 13 weeks is about creating the podcast. So you're, you know, you're helping the founder, the entrepreneur, whoever it might be to really extract everything from their mind and get Mm -hmm. it out there in audio or video transcript. And you're using those exercises for each of the 13 weeks to create four podcasts a day, was it? So they've got for a week on your on your radio show time. You have that accountability to know, Okay, showtime. Yeah. So then they've got all of this content. And as you say, cast magic can do more magic with it. Yeah. And uh, and so that when does it become a radio show? When does it become something that just continuously plays? Is it? Okay, so the station is a radio station, and I might have Rob at one o'clock on Wednesday, and I've had Adam at two o'clock on Wednesday, and I have Tim at at three o'clock, and I have Alex at four o'clock. So that's how it continuously plays. You'll hear different voices over the 24 hour period, seven days a week. Uh, and And I tell the host, it's your job to bring people to your show. You want them to follow you, they want them to hear you, but then you're also gonna be heard I had this conversation yesterday in our team huddle every week we have a marketing huddle and they said you know we get listeners because they were listening to the show before us and it, and then they bled over so it's it's organic reach and hello to william eastman there's bill my business partner <laughs> hey bill actually hey, bill. Bill's had some great comments um let's see uh, he was saying provides pre and post marketing opportunities mm-hmm. or used to help closing prospects in the yeah. sales funnel. Mm-hmm. So are, yeah. you, are, you, are you helping? Sorry, we can come back to that just in one second. So are you, are you helping your client then create their own radio show or you're inviting the client onto your radio show to support the content creation wheel that you have? they're coming on to my station with their show okay okay and we used to say you get a a radio show and a podcast but now the language is you get a radio show that equals a podcast because as you do your radio show it's recorded Mm -hmm. and that recording then becomes your podcast and we, we I tell our hosts, I tell them to put a little something on their playlist that says originally aired on the IBGR radio network so that it's we use the podcast live formatting, not a lot of editing. And, you know, and, and so if you think about transformation, you want that authenticity to connect. And yeah. so it's 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 a podcast live format versus the, the highly edited versions. OK, so I've started playing around with Restream with all of the different things that I've been doing with, with these fine gentlemen. We do some other stuff, sales TV. I've, I've started my own 15 minute uh, podcast uh, called Walking Digital Corridors. And then using Restream, I can create playlists. Mm-hmm. And so yesterday I played six hours worth of content through my LinkedIn profile. And I hadn't given it a name or anything, but what you're talking about sounds like it's very similar. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And then and back to my daughter, you know, she was saying in, she listens on Spotify and she says, well, I don't like to keep clicking to listen to the next one. I want it to be continuous. And what you said, just create a playlist, create your own playlist and, and add it in there and it'll play whoever you want, however you want as much or as little, yes. but yeah, 
re repurpose. If you're going to get behind any kind of microphone, turn the camera on, do the best job that you can, and then leverage the heck out of it. We say it's like the champagne glass pyramid. If you've ever seen them at a wedding, the champagne, the pyramid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, like yeah, there's like 92 glasses in the pyramid, but they don't pour each glass. They pour to the top one and then it comes down and fills all the glasses. We say your radio show is the champagne going into the glass. And then how many different ways can you repurpose that? So what you're doing, Alex, is that is the same thing. You're you're taking it and repurposing it and leveraging it. Yeah. So along those lines, how do the dynamics of Internet radio shape the way businesses communicate and connect with their target audience? Mm hmm. That's a, it's a really great question because in any kind of radio, it's not like this where people are commenting. The, the big question is, how do I know who's listening? Even the podcast world, how do I know who's listening? And so it's structuring a very clear and compelling call to action to want to have a conversation with you. Um, in the influencer formula, my book that's coming out, the, the marketing strategy, and Rob, you and I talked about this, it's be seen, be heard, be easy to follow so that you're positioned as the solution. We all want to be the solution in our in our business right how do we do that it's the three-legged chair and be seen is how do people stumble across you radio linkedin uh, profiles websites how do they how do they how do they know that you exist be heard is what message do you have and how are you getting it out there is it a book is it a radio show is it a podcast how are you being heard and then be easy to follow. This is the leg of the chair that most people have just a little stump. <laughs> How does somebody have that conversation? How do you invite them to connect with you so that you know they exist? So, that, so be seen, they're, they're interested, they lean in a little bit, but you don't know they're there. Be heard, they're starting to consume your information, you still don't know that they're there. Be easy to follow is when they're actually seeing you as the solution. You're having those conversations and you're able to have a two-way dialogue. They raise their hand and say, look, I'm here, I'm here. Please help me with whatever it is I need help with. So just to reiterate, be seen, be heard, be easy to follow. Mm -hmm. That's how you can unlock the full potential of your business message. Yep, 100%. So because now you, you're positioned as the solution. That's the only way to position you. Tim, you had a... I just said it was fantastic, Donna. Uh, William has also made some other uh, comments. Yes. So he made a comment uh, about which. Ah, th there we go. <laughs> uh, we were talking about <laughs> video. Uh, the Blair Witch Project changed the game on live video. And uh, William goes on to say, uh, one thought and specific to your industry, your prospects can sample the product yeah. or service before purchasing. Mm -hmm. That's they already one. know you. Mm -hmm. Yep, just like Sarita, her her client already knew her before he reached out to have the conversation with her. She didn't have to sell anything. Yeah, he's like, I just here take my money. <laughs> <laughs> and who doesn't want to be there? <laughs> That reminds me of the um, the statistic from CEB, where buyers are 57% down the buyer's journey before they engage with sales. And anecdotally, mm -hmm. the uh, sales industry, is the sales enablement industry, are all saying, no, it's much more like 60, 70, 80, even 90%. We had a, a guest on another show recently that was saying it, it's probably 90%. And part of that research is consuming content like a podcast or a radio program or reading a blog. And you're talking about now the, the full potential of all of that. So internet radio is one more dynamic way to get that message out there mm -hmm. yep and it's and it's a unique way 
uh, what I hear from my hosts is that when they first put it in their LinkedIn profile, their bio, it says global radio show host, people wake up and they're like, what? Tell me more about that. When they go and do a speaking engagement and they're being introduced as global radio show host and podcaster XYZ person, people like sit up a little bit more. They want to hear it because you, you as the business owner, you're saying, I value what I have to say enough that I'm not going to hide under a shell. I'm going to actually go out into the world and speak my, speak my message. So it's a bit like, it. it's a bit like saying that you, you write for Forbes or something like that, isn't it? It's a, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. I think now I know the answer to this question uh -huh. just based on what you've said so far, but how can you maximize your reach and establish yourself as an influential voice? It's, it's, it's that be seen and be heard, be easy to follow. It's that trifecta right there. And, and how do you do that? How, so when I take my host through that formula, I say, okay, do you have a website? And they say, yeah. And I say, does it position you as the solution that, that you're offering? No, we'll go update it. Okay. I have a podcast. I'm being heard. Okay. On your podcast, as your call to action, does your messaging position you as the solution you want to be? Well, not quite. And then being easy to follow again, are, are you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out there. Are, are you making it easy? Do you have a, a link to book a, a sh book a conversation with you? Do you have a contact uh, email address? You know, do they know how to contact? Well, not so much. And so it's really getting into that mold and in 13 weeks, you can have one solution in 13 weeks and then do another show season with us and have a different, a different offer. Most of us are multidimensional in offers, but focus on one and make sure that all three of those legs position you as that one solution, which is really hard for some business owners to do, to, to focus on just that one thing. But it has to William happen shares, or else it's confusion. Absolutely. Uh, William shares surround prospects using all the available media channels, do it once and repurpose everywhere. Mm -hmm. What about for the enterprise organization? Is this just as viable? Is this something they should be uh, doing on their own? Or is it still something where working with a radio station is uh, more viable, uh, more vibrant uh, opportunity for them? So you're talking about corporate America, corporate. Yeah. Europe, Why corporate. doesn't corporate America just spin up their own radio station? That's what we've been asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, or associations. What if there was the, the CFO radio network? What if there was the patent attorney radio network? What if there was the doctor radio network and you had all of the influencers in that particular niche on the station so that others could listen and be mentored in a way that that really makes us all better and again i want to go back to the difference between a podcast and a radio station it mm -hmm. reminds me of the conversation that i've had with my kids I grew up with what is now termed linear television. Thursday night on NBC was must watch TV. The Cosby show was a tremendous hit. Anything that followed the Cosby show, I know, it's been anymore. canceled. But <laughs> anything that followed Thou Who Should Not Be Named <laughs> was also a tremendous hit. Even if they then moved time slots or nights or whatever they they got that mm -hmm. initial following my kids don't have that sense of of linear programming for them it's all about on demand and mm -hmm. what i'm finding is discovery is harder for me in an everything on demand world i sit down with netflix and i will scroll through 
a dozen different options and then turn it off after five minutes because I don't know. Whereas I turn on the, the TV, I tune to one of the stations that I, I'm just comfortable with and the programming is good enough, close enough, and I stay there for the night. You, you, you say that, Rob, but um, the reason that you're going to watch Film X is because Alex has just watched Film X and told you that it's great. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the point now. We've shifted from this kind of uh, generic recommendation because, you know, this is this is mainstream programming. This is the hot hour during the evening. And then immediately afterwards, well, I haven't yet gone to bed, so I'll start to watch it and stick around to watch the rest of the show. Now, actually, because we've got this stuff on demand, what we're all looking for, and it's not just TV shows, this is every kind of media and every kind of um, entertainment, you know, it's like Tim does a every quarter he does a book review. You know, these are the 10 books that I've read this last quarter, and this is what I would recommend that you read. And actually, I'm more likely to read a book because Tim's already done some sifting. You know, he's going to, here are 10 books, five of them are crap. I wouldn't bother with those. Five of them are fantastic, and you must read these. Okay, well, that's five books that I can put in my shopping list rather than going to a well known bookseller from A to Z uh, and, and seeing 150 trillion books. And go. I I I I I don't know. I don't know where to start. And I think that increasingly that's the point, isn't it? And I think the beauty of this is that uh, we publish. Yes, we publish on uh, on the podcasting type and radio show type channels. But actually, you then get to know the person or the host. And then you engage with the content on the social channels, which means that you get social spread across those channels, which means that people in your network get to see that you're listening to my show because you're listening mm-hmm. to it and because you've engaged. Recommended for you, yeah. Yeah, and and that's a big that's a big thing these days, isn't it? And it's a very it's a very significant shift because this mm-hmm. is based on who I am and who I know rather than what I've watched. Yeah, I had someone this week. Um, Someone else had put a, a post up about a marketing book on um, on LinkedIn, um, and they'd gone to Amazon and seen that I'd recommended it. And they come back and posted on LinkedIn, "I see and tagged me. Tim has recommended it. I'm going to go and buy it." Mm-hmm. Was it our book? No, it wasn't actually. No. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not interested then. Yeah, and and, and that's like that. It's the network effect, and that's what we are teaching our hosts. Also, is that you want to have those conversations within your existing networks so that they fall in love with what you're doing on the station and want to share you with others because it's the other people recommending you that's perfect. And then uh, as you were saying, um, the beauty of what we do at the station is that with the, with the radio show as a business owner, I can put it in my schedule that in my diary, that what oh yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> that every every thursday at 1 p.m is is my show that i want to watch or listen to the the that on the station so i can set an alarm to remind me to show up for my growth because i want to catch it live i'm one of those that you know fomo people i just i have to have the first be the first and so our host can say i'm going live thursday at whatever time come and listen to my show on ibg or network and then they can come back and say, hey, if you missed it, the podcasts are ready and you can listen on demand. So then you can go back and, and catch whatever you miss. So it's it's really hitting two different types of audiences with that, too. Those that want to sched- set a schedule and those who want to say, this is my world. I want to live in it and I'll listen when I want to. Uh, William shares in, in response to the question earlier, why aren't more enterprises just doing this on, on their own? Uh, he says it's about core competencies. If this is an internal competence, do it yourself. If not, outsource, partner with an organization that does it 24 mm-hmm. 7. I might even say, building off of that show that must, must not be named, uh, leveraging the affiliation in, in partnering with others mm-hmm. is probably more beneficial than going out there and doing it on your own even if you have that core competency it's yeah. great that you know you could have this podcast but if the show before you and the show after you are things of interest to the people you're trying to reach right there's a likelihood that they will jump in on uh, your 
just through happenstance. Mm -hmm. Just just out of curiosity to hear what the next one is about. There's that that layover to it. And, you know, with our station, we get we get listening uh, metrics and we're we're 30 minutes to 45 minutes uh, average listening time. Yeah. So that tells me that they're listening to at least two, maybe three of of the of the segments Mm -hmm. of the shows. So Mm -hmm. that says to me that well, people are resonating with this kind of format because in terrestrial radio station, it's like seven to 10 minutes or so. There's very, very fickle audience um, to get it out to. So that was a good, good validation. Um, I, I, I want to just do a quick, quick little imagination experiment. Imagine, Adam, Tim, Alex, and Rob, imagine that you can go out to your social networks and say, hey, I'm a global radio show host. What do you what do you think? How do you think that your audience would respond to that? Stop Positive. showing off. <laughs> do you think they say that? <laughs> I don't know. They would only say that tongue in cheek. You know, we already yeah. because we do multiple of these video podcasts. We already all of us have that on our profiles, and we talk about the fact that we do that. Uh, and uh, we have th- there's a kernel of very loyal listeners who listen to pretty much everything we do because they're really engaged by us and the themes and the things we talk about and think are important they think are important as well so um yeah i mean it it, it it's another thread to that another string to that bow isn't it and mm-hmm. I, I think that um uh, that they wouldn't be surprised if we said you know we're global radio shows in fact i think if we if we said we're global radio hosts i think they'd probably say well, I thought you already were. <laughs> but because for, for, for a lot of people, you know, when they tune into one of the social networks, we are there looking back at them already. Mm-hmm. So the fact it's something else, they would just assume that we were in all of these places. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there is, there is some, you know, when, when you say the words global radio show host, you then, you know, I then think of something like a Stephen Bartlett in front of his microphone interviewing someone else having a chat um but yeah what well I, what if what if what if i invited you to syndicate your show you can say now syndicated on the influence radio network which is our brand new station i think that would be uh, that would be amazing. brilliant because <laughs> <laughs> i'd love to invite you to syndicate your show on our network and become global radio show host. So we can get your voice out to our network and promote you into the countries that we're in. Yeah. That would be fantastic. Would be fantastic. <laughs> but but for the not for the for the you know for the perhaps uh uh more naive of the bunch, what what does that actually mean when you say if I syndicate your show? Yeah, thank you for asking that because it is a big question that we get all the time. Um, the, the, the thing that a lot of podcasters don't realize is that radio stations can get listed on, on radio directories. Right. We can be heard on uh, tune in radio, not tune in podcast, right? We can be heard on serious radio, not, not, not iHeart podcast, not iHeart radio. Like we're on the radio networks, uh, which is that findability, that new level of, of what's going on. And so syndication is is just a replay of a recording right on a radio station. Okay. So okay. it's not and so that's the differentiation between it and many of the terrestrial radio shows are syndicated. So you you can think of like Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey isn't live sitting behind his microphone when you hear him on the radio. It's it's a syndication of something that he has sent to them. And mm-hmm. so for the digital download it's a it's a syndication it's a replay of your of your content of your material out to a brand new audience who is who is tuning into radio they like this idea of radio i I think that's the amazing part of it and as we're as we've been speaking this hour it's dawned on me it's really about that discovery it's great that we have 
these episodes. We have the recordings on a, a YouTube channel. But if nobody is going out to actively seek that, it, it doesn't exist. Whereas with an internet radio station, you have an audience that is seeking information around a given topic or theme. In this case, business information. And they don't know what they're listening for, so they couldn't actually go and search for the, the digital download proactively. But mm -hmm. now they will stumble upon it. And mm -hmm. some of them might even like it. And then they will continue to, to seek out other ways of discovering what we're sharing through this. So for me, that's the, the word there that, that sums it up is discovery. Yeah. And a reason to talk to your audience about something new. Hey, super excited. We just got syndicated. What do you mean you just got syndicated? Oh, we're going to be on a global radio show, radio station. Oh, oh, <laughs> you know, for for a lot of the, the hosts that we work with, it it's there's there's 10 different marketers standing in a row and all of them are doing something on social media and they're sending out newsletters. And then there's one of them that says, hey, I'm on a I'm on a I'm on a radio. I have a radio show. I have my own radio show. What do you think happens to the other nine little marketers? Well, they don't get as much attention. <laughs> so it, it it really is. It's that differentiator. I, I, I love the fact, Donna, because um, I know that Alice Cooper has a syndicated radio show because I listen to it sometimes on Planet Rock. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, we'll, we'll be like Alice Cooper. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> right, right, we'll, we'll, we'll come with black eyeshadow. Um, <laughs> yeah, just sing the school's out song. Go ahead. Do yeah. It. <laughs> we'll play it with our piccolo. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Rocking. <laughs> so one more time, Donna. Be seen. Be heard. Be easy, easy to find. find. Yeah. Easy to follow. So, I, right. I like so that you are positioned as the solution. So that the bright shining beacon says, I'm the solution because of these three things. Be seen, be heard, be easy to follow. Fantastic. And I like Rob uh, Terrell's comment there. Yes, about the easy I, I to wanted find. to bring that up. So yeah. Rob Terrell says, would add be easy to find, to be seen be heard, be easy to follow. Being able to search via keywords, concepts, uh, uh, stage before being followed. Yeah. Yeah. All of that. And all of that in alignment with the solution. See, that's the key right there is I, as a business owner, I might have five to 10 different solutions, but in any one business quarter, what if you were really shining the light on one solution and you had it lined up with those three things. So keywords, yes, pointing to that one solution. Your your website, your bio, your about section, your profile, all of that lining up to that one solution. And then you're speaking it in social media, that, that one solution. Uh, and then how can they reach you? How can they have that conversation with you? Yeah. So, so yes. very soon then we, we can put on our profiles, a uh, global show radio host. Yes. Do you <laughs> like that? <laughs> Donna, that's fantastic news. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, thank you. Donna, how can uh, more people find out about you, about the radio network and about internet radio in general? So the website is ibgr.network, ibgr.network. That's a great place to go uh, to learn more and to, to listen and to, to get an idea of who and what we are. Personally, I'm Donna at ibgr.network. Easy to find there. Uh, happy to have a conversation via email. Uh, I think those are the two great places. And of course, I'm on LinkedIn, always willing to connect and collaborate. Excellent. This has been another episode of the digital download which is now an internationally syndicated <laughs> longest running weekly business talk show on linkedin live we hope to be seen be heard 
and be easy to follow. If you want to be seen, be heard, be easy to follow and be a part of a global syndication, if you have something to say, we'd love to hear from you. Join us, uh, visit our website, digitaldownload.live, scan the QR code or find the Be Our Guest section and reach out. For Adam, for Alex, for Tim, and for myself, I wanted to say thank you very much, Donna. Thank you very much you. to the audience. William, thank you for being a part of the audience. Andrew, Robert, and, and I know we had a number of other comments. Thank you all. This has been the Digital Download. We'll see you again next week. Yeah. Bye, everyone.